Today we're ranking two mana blue spells on a tier list. I'm gonna start off with chart a course. And by the way, the rules for the show is anything except creatures. It's gotta be two mana. I know creatures are technically spells, but like, you get what I'm saying. All right, try to cards. We've got a blue one generic sorcery. Draw two cards, then discard a card unless you attack with the creature this turn. So actually, both modes are pretty good. If you draw two cards, you might want to discard a card to either reanimate it, flashback, get delirium, uh, get threshold, fill that graveyard, or if you just attack with a creature, you just might want to draw two cards and get that value. So Charter Course has seen quite a bit of play through uh, Pioneer Standard, even a little bit of Modern, and is actually a pretty worthy inclusion in a ton of decks to help filter to the cards that you want. I actually think this is a, a decent, I don't know if this is A tier, Put at B tier, somewhere in the middle ground. It honestly probably is in between here. There's a lot of mediocre cards that are gonna end up being in this list, but you know what? Blue cards are super ultra powerful, and there's gonna be some stuff in the S tier that is an A tier that's gonna be beyond the chart of the course. All right, our first super chat for the day is uh, Kagan. Thank you very much. Jumping in early with Search for Escanta. Alrighty then, Search for Escanta. This is a card that was insane when it first came out. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't say it was broken, but it was like, it was a banger. It's a blue one generic legendary enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top card of your library. You may put it into the graveyard. I mean, so it's basically a surveilling machine. Then if you have seven or more cards in your graveyard, you may transform Search for Azkanta, and you get Azkanta the Sunken Ruin, which taps to add a blue mana, or you can pay three, tap, look at the top four cards of your library, and reveal a non-creature, non-land card from among them, and put it directly in your hand, and put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Uh, absolutely insane value card. Now, the only problem with this card is that you need the game to go long. That's the only, but that's the only problem, and if it does go long, you're basically Basically, like, what is this, like, impulse every single turn? Oh, yeah, I'll look at the top four cards. I'll look at the top four cards. I'll look at the top four cards. And it adds mana on top of all of that. Search for his Kanta was super good when it came out. Still pretty playable even today. We'll put that cozily up into the A tier. Love Search for his Kanta. All right, next up, we got uh, Toad with <laughs> Days. This is a card... Uh, it's actually, maybe, the no, Commander players don't know, but this card is in contention of, like, getting banned in Legacy. There's a lot of people who actually want Days banned, because it makes so many of the blue decks so damn good. It makes the combo decks good. It makes the, the, the low-tempo decks really good. The Delver, the Shadow decks. It's a blue one generic instant. However, okay, it says counter-target spell unless its controller pays one. You would think, well, pfft. One mana? How hard is it to pay that? And then you ask Rhystic Study players and, the, and they'll say, oh, it's apparently impossible. All right, you may return an island you control to its owner's hand instead of paying Daze's mana cost. That's where this card gets insane. Because if you only need like two lands in play, then it's not even a big deal that you put a land back into your hand. Most of the time, if you're putting pressure on your opponent, either through a combo deck or a tempo deck, your opponent has to tap out. They're not gonna waste, they're not gonna waste mana on the table. Especially maybe you don't have the, day, the days, all right? If I leave up a man, you don't have it, I'm at a huge loss. We're gonna take that risk and try to play the, uh, force them to have it, but they always have it. Days is actually an S tier card. Uh, definitely an S tier counter spell. And who knows, maybe it's not long for this world, like two or three years into the future. Okay, next up we've got the super chat from Cunning Linguist. We got the Time Walk. Has anyone ever heard of that card before? Anybody? Time Walk, anybody? Is this card even that good? You know, <laughs> it's. I say that in jest, but like, blue one generic sorcery, take an extra turn after this one. If you build around this card properly, yeah, this, th this thing is broken. It is the cheapest take an extra turn spell uh, ever in Magic the Gathering. Now, on top of that, like, well, here's the funny thing. In cube, it's not that good. Like, it's good, but pretty often it's just like an explore, pay a blue one generic, 
draw a card, put an extra land in play, and pass. That's basically how it acts, like, a, a good chunk of the time. But, uh, that being said, you know, it's still take- you don't really want to play it on turn two. I mean, you will if you have it available. But if you have it later on the game, you have a billion creatures on the board. You crack for, like, 30 damage, time walk again, and think of the potential of flashing it back and recurring it over and over again with Snapcaster Mage or something else like that. Does it, um... I can't remember. Is there not like an Isochron Scepter? Iso, Iso, I don't think Isochron Scepter can take this card. Isochron Scepter. Isochron Scepter is only like instants, right? Make Excel an instant card. But is there not like an Isochron Scepter for sorceries of some sort? I think it exists out there. You put Time Walk on it, it'll be it'll be GG. Uh, over, over. Okay, this card is uh, obviously busted. Not always busted, but when it chooses to be busted, it will be busted. S tier. It's in right next to days. Need days to counter that thing. Imagine the Delver decks and all the other tempo decks if they had access to Time Walk. Uh, I remember the time when I'm trying to break See the Truth in Standard. One, is that a card to look at? See the Truth. Oh it, oh, it is a blue spell. All right, we got a blue one generic sorcery. Look at the top three cards of your library. Put one of those cards into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. If the spell was cast from anywhere other than your hand, oh, put each of those cards into your hand instead. It's basically if you flash this back with Snapcaster Mage uh, or some sort or play it from your graveyard, uh, you're going to end up drawing the three cards instead of the... Instead of, what is it, the two? Look at the top three cards. No, put one of them instead of the one. All right, see the truth. I know this card has seen some some play. It's a you know it's a it's a playable. It's a playable. We can put that in the B tier of the playables. Not the most exciting playable, but not the worst uh, card at all. Yeah, we're excluding creatures today. Okay, next up, Henrik with Spreading Seas. The blue. They they some some people call it the blue um. The blue stone rain. I think that's sort of fair to call it that. It's a uh, blue one generic enchantment. It's an aura. Uh, when uh, Spreading Seas enters the battlefield, draw a card. An enchanted land is an island, so it is no longer whatever the card type was. If it was a plains, not anymore. If it was a mountain, not anymore. Dual lands now become island. If you have a blood moon out, then I play Spreading Seas. Your mountain becomes an island because of time stamps. It is particularly good at shutting down Tron lands and Tron lands, Locust lands. Uh, if Urza Saga, it blows up Urza Saga because it turns the saga into an island, losing all its chapters, but it's got the lore counters on it, so that it has to sacrifice itself because it has more lore counters than it has chapters on it. Uh, so it's a Swiss army knife in that regard. Uh, and also, of course, the merfolk players love their spreading seas. Enabling island walk to their island walk lords. A tier card. Very, very nice. Even played by some control players. For all those reasons. It's like it's a decent land control card. It's flexible in a, a lot of blue decks. Next super chat we got from Rated Lex. Thank you so much. The mana drain. Seems balanced. I think it's okay. Let's look at the OG card. Where is the OG? Looks like some brain sucking something from the moon. Uh, it's a blue blue. Uh, we'll just look at the oracle text. It's an instant. Carry target spell and at the beginning of your next main phase, add an amount of colorless equal to that spell's mana value. Man, if this was legal in Legacy, I would love it. I don't even think it's that powerful for Legacy, even though it's banned. Like, it's good. Don't get me wrong. I could, like, mana drain some big creature, then play a Karn the Great Creator or a One Ring on the following turn. And I would love it. I would absolutely love it. It's a, it's a fair card. I'm totally not biased blue player. I, I'm the same way, Henrik. I'm the same way. And obviously, it's not too powerful for Commander. There's even some Commander decks that don't even play this card, believe it or not, because it's just too expensive. It's like, two mana for a counter spell. <laughs> That's nothing. If you're playing, if you're spending mana on on your counter spells, you're an absolute chump. At least if you're spending more than one around here. All right, mana drain. Drain your brain. Definitely an S tier worthy card. Love mana drain. Uh, bean pot with standstill. This card used to be very, very good. I mean, it's not. It's still not too bad. 
It's a blue one generic enchantment. Whenever a player plays a spell, sacrifice standstill. If you do, each of that op a player's opponents draw three cards. So in the right control deck, this is pretty good. Like if the board is wiped, you can play standstill and force your aggro opponent or whatever mid-range opponent to do something. And all of a sudden, once they once they crack the standstill, it's time to celebrate. You're going to draw three cards. Take your time, they say. There's a lot of decks built around creature lands that played standstill as well. So, like, they had no problem playing a standstill, even with the opponent having a creature or so on the board, because they know they'd play enough lands that could eventually contest with those creatures and just win with the creature lands in general. Uh, however, the pr one biggest problem with standstill today is, like, decks are super aggressive and can get a huge board state very early on in the game to the point that standstill, a little slow by today's standards, you are usually behind and you can't catch up sometimes they'll even force you to draw your cards and, you can, and you're gonna have to discard the hand size so there's like actually room to play around the standstill like wait for your opponent have seven cards in hand all right play your spell get them to 10 they're gonna draw an extra card they go to 11 can they play all their spells probably not and then they're gonna have to discard the hand size so they actually don't get that much benefit out of their standstill so i'll put an eight here worthy of value however they printed this in like pioneer probably would see more play all right let's look at daniel with accumulated knowledge this card used to be like a blue staple in control decks and combo decks because it was a blue one generic instant you draw a card so first off it's like cycle the first one is just two mana cycle i get a new card but then you draw cards equal to the number of accumulated knowledge cards in all graveyards so it counts both yourself and your opponent so the second accumulated knowledge will draw you two cards then the second the third one will draw you three and then and then the fourth one will draw you four so it was like one of the better card advantage cards uh, of its era. Now it's stone useless. It's really bad. In commander, this is complete crap. How many accumulated knowledge cards can you have in your commander deck? One? One com accumulated knowledge card. Oh well, it's too bad. And uh, it's above and beyond like worse than ponder or preordain by today's standards. So sadly, accumulated knowledge uh, aged like sour milk, and I would put it today in the C tier. I don't think anyone would want to play this card by today's standards. Maybe the pre-modern players? I actually don't, uh, I would have to look at the pre-modern decks. If pre-modern is playing this card, maybe it deserves to be in the B tier. Okay, next up, we have... Is anyone super chatting counterspell? Okay, I don't see anyone super chatting counterspell, so we're gonna give it to Restion Serpentine. Counterspell! The OG. The first, but not the last, counterspell in Magic the Gathering. Let's take a look at... Oh man, there's pages and pages of counterspells. Here it is. The one that started it all from Alpha. Blue, blue. Counters target spell as it's being cast. Just counter target spell in this initially. Uh, this card makes people's blood boil. It is above and beyond, like the cleanest answer. Cleanest counterspell of them all. Just one mana, just, sorry, one card for your one card. My two mana for whatever mana that you decided to spend on it. Counterspell is a fantastic card. Uh, but it's not broken because it still costs you two mana. We'll put it into the A tier. But it's still uh, an eternally good card. Believe it or not, it's like unplayable in Legacy. Like, just completely useless there. Okay, next up. Uh, let's go take a look at... Um, okay, look at another one from Kagan. Gotta do a bad one, too. The Fish Liver Oil. Never heard of it. Fish Liver Oil is a two-mana aura enchant creature. Enchant creature has Island Walk. You're right. This card is incredibly, incredibly underwhelming. Fish Liver Oil. Where are they getting this oil from? Where are they getting the, the oil? From the liver of the fish? What are the merfolk doing down there? Anyway, okay, uh, I'm gonna definitely give this like D tier worthy status. This is, this card's awful. Pretty, pretty awkward. Okay, next up we've got. Is Fogbank two mana? No one. Fogbank is a creature. Remember, no creatures. It's gotta be spells, which I know are also creatures. Sorry, creatures are also spells on the stack. But you know, we know spells as like anything but a creature in this game. 
if you get the terminology. Carlo, Arcane Denial. It's a bit of a funny card. It is a blue one generic instant. Counter target spell. Its controller may draw up to two cards at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep. However, you at least also draw a card at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep. So you do counter the card that they have. Uh, on the other hand, they're going to get a card back. So the next, so they, and they're also drawing two cards. And you're also going to draw. However, you are also going to get a rebate on your arcane denial by drawing an extra card. Uh, but on the, uh, still, overall, your opponent nets more cards than you do. Still a good card. Still a hard counter spell for the thing that you actually need to counter. Second off, you might be able to prevent your opponents from drawing extra cards through something like Narset. So that means this Arcane Denial is just gravy. Because your opponent probably drew a card for the turn. They can't draw extra cards. So you counter the spell and you draw a card. Which is just cash money value. Uh, so it's still a very good playable card. It's hard to get like two mana literally counter the spell in front of you and maybe you can construct your deck or the board so that the card that you draw is more valuable to you than the cards that your opponents draw okay next up we're going to take a look at a super chat from steve cooper artificer class and counter spell we already did counter spell sorry about that but we can look at artificer class i'll donate your last your second i know you're all about the donation steve cooper this artif artificer Artificer class. I did not spell this right. Artificer class. There we go. It is a... I don't even know what this is. Okay, it's a two-mana enchantment class. Now, the first artifact spell you cast each turn costs one less. That's not bad. That's pretty good. I think uh, level two for a blue and one generic. When this class becomes level two, reveal cards on the top of your library until you reveal an artifact card. Put that card into your hand and the rest in the bottom of your library in a random order. Then there's level three at six mana. At the beginning of your end step, create a token that's a copy of target artifact you control. That's hard to get to. Okay, so for two mana, it's a sort of a cost reducer. And then at another two mana, what is that? Level 2. Level 3? So when we're at, it starts at level 1. Yeah, this is level 1 down here. I don't know how good this card is, to be honest. I don't even like this last ability. At the beginning of your end step. I guess it's okay, actually. 6 mana. So at like the if you have nothing else to do with your turn, you can just sink 6 mana into this thing and start copying target artifacts that you control. <laughs> impulse, but bit, but OG art. Oh, you're oh you're asking me for the impulse. We'll look at it. Okay. Uh, I gotta make an executive decision. I think this is an awkward card. I have no idea how good or bad it is. Maybe it's better than I'm giving it credit for, but I'm putting it into the C tier. Okay. We have a uh, super chat from Steve Cooper to give away. We we'll go with Slack Wellman's Dan Dan. Dan Dan the fish. One, am I looking up Dan Dan correctly? Dan Dan, the blue blue four one fish. Dan Dan can't attack unless defending player controls an island. When you control no islands, sacrifice Dan Dan. This card is awful. I know there are entire formats based around this card, but still, like in a vacuum, it's worthless. So if you force your opponents to draw from the same deck, and they and you can only win with Dan Dan, and everyone has to play islands, then Dan Dan's good. But outside of that, it Dan Dan is sort of crap. <laughs> uh, whoops. I think Dan Dan is terrible, actually. It's all Dan Dan is only good in the Dan Dan format. Yeah, it's a creature. That's for, oh yeah, it's a creature. It gets disqualified. Yeah, it'd be fish. It'd be fishy around here. Okay, no Dan Dan. Moving on. But if there was Dan Dan, I would just I would I would put in the. C tier. Okay, next up, uh, we'll look at Julio's Muddle the Mixture. 
Well, the mixture. Both sides are not too bad. Blue, blue, instant. Carry target instant or sorcery spell. Or you may transmute it for a blue, blue, one generic. Discard this card. Search your library for a card with the same mana value as this card. Reveal it. Put it in your hand. Then shuffle your library. Transmute only as a sorcery. What do you like to transmute for? So the great thing is, like, it's a decent counter spell. It's a hard counter to instants and sorceries, which will very commonly be, like, win conditions. But also, you can look for very specific cards. Um, and it can be, it, it's the same mana value as this card. So you can go get a creature. You can get a sorcery. You can go get, so you search library for a card with the same mana value. Like, you get artifact. You can get, you can get anything that is at least, uh, two mana. No, at least it has to be exactly two mana. Tutoring is not bad. I love my tutors, so I gotta love Muddle the Mixture. It is a slightly, it is does not see a whole lot of play outside of Commander, but in Commander, it is a pretty good banger. I'll put it in the A tier. It is a very nice one. Okay, next super chat we got from John, the Limdoll's Vault. Limdoll's. Incredible time waster. You don't say. Um, this is gold. Okay, I'm gonna give it to you because you super chatted, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do any gold cards that are not like uh, what's it called that are are for free. Okay, we got Limdol's Vault. I highly shun the gold cards. It's supposed to be a blue tier list, damn it. It's like blue and black. Okay, instant. Look at the top five cards of your library as many times as you choose. You may pay one life. Put those cards on the bottom of your library in any order. Then look at the top five cards of your library. Then shuffle your library and put the the last cards you looked at this way on top in any order. What the hell does this card even do? Still have no clue how it works. I also don't know how this works. So we look at the top five cards of our library. Then as many times as I choose, I may pay one life, put those cards on the bottom of my library in any order, then look at the top five cards of my library, then sh then shuffle your library and put the last cards you looked at this way on top of any order. Huh? You're right, Christopher B. This is a confounding conundrum. If there's anything a confounding conundrum, it's this thing. <laughs> it's a time waster by how long you have to take to figure it out. I don't know how this card works. I'm putting it on the bottom. D for don't know how it works. And I'm not gonna bu You know what, if you cheat me with that card, all right, that's fine. Maybe you needed the game that badly. You needed the game more uh, more, more than I needed to understand how it worked. Oh boy, Teferi's Veil. Teferi's Veil. Got some helmet over there. We got a two-man enchantment. Whenever any creature you control attacks, it phases out at end of combat. Any creature you control? What's the point of that? I don't see any real... I mean, I get it. You could, like, build your deck with board wipes or something. You attack, you deal damage, wipe the board. That doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense to me. I'm going to put in the D tier. I'm sure there's some janky way you can build around this card, but... But why? Chow says, you're filtering your deck. You keep pay one life to dig through the top five cards of your deck until you find the five cards you want. You then shuffle, put those five cards on top of your deck. Oh! In that case... All right, that was for uh, Lim Dull's Vault. Why didn't they just say that? I can put in the B tier. That's not bad. Five... So, like, in a 99-card deck, to get through your entire 99 cards... You can, you can pay um, 20 life to get through them all and get exactly what you want. Can you reorder the cards? Look at the top five cards of your library as many times as you choose. Oh, you cannot reorder them. You just keep looking at the top five cards and keep moving them around. Why does it say shuffle your library? Oh, I guess so you have a, a fresh five cards or something like that. That's a bit weird. Cunning Linguist, thank you very much for your super chat. Dress down or flash? We'll look at dress down. Dress down, a pretty new card, uh, also pretty versatile. Blue one generic enchantment, flash. When there's the battlefield, you draw a card. Uh, creatures lose all abilities. So if you, if something's about to enter the battlefield with a ETB, uh, nope, you don't get that ETB. Uh, if it has a static ability on the battlefield, nope, doesn't have that either. 
The only downside is uh, you, at the beginning of your end step, you have to sacrifice dress down. So now there's some cute things you can do with this, though. You could also play it at the end of someone else's turn and then have it completely online for their entire turn until their end step, when you have to sacrifice it. Really, really nice uh, card. Very flexible. I think this is an A-tier quality card. Not that True Name Nemesis was a problem in Commander, because someone else can kill it, but... Uh, if you really need to deal with anything, you deal with the Dress Down. Dress Down didn't blow it up. Okay, next up, uh, we've got... Give one to Christopher B. Geist Wave. I did not spell that right. It is an instant, a blue one generic instant. Return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. If you controlled that permanent, you draw a card. This is a very sad panda card. I mean, it's o it's okay. Put an accumulated knowledge territory. C for accumulating value at a very low rate. I mean, that's a, it's a bounce spell. If you bounce your own spell, you cash in. That's all. That's all it is. Not the Zilla wants impulse. But with the OG art, okay, we go. We go. We'll look at the ancient scripture. Also, this is probably also when it was poorly worded. Shuffle your library. No, it doesn't do that anymore. Okay, instant for uh, two mana. Look at the top four cards of your library. Put one of them into your hand, and the rest on the bottom of your library. Yeah, just in the library uh, in any order. Uh, that's it. But it's two mana. Dig through your cards deep. It is not nearly as good as it used to be. It used to be, like, way stronger when we didn't have, like, Ponder, Brainstorm, Preordain, uh, Expressive Iteration. You know, there's a lot of blue value cards that are just not... They just completely overpowered this imp Impulse. That being said, Impulse is still a good, strong card. Nothing wrong with it. It's instant speed. It's not sorcery. So, you know what? We're going to pay respect to Impulse. We put it in the B tier. Next super chat we got from Bryce Overburden. Overburden is a two-man enchantment. Whenever a player puts a creature card into play, that player returns a land they control to its owner's hand. Interesting. How do you use this, though? So two-man enchantment. Whenever a player puts a creature card into play, that player... So for the players that are not playing Landfall... That is incredibly annoying. Um, but if you are playing Landfall, this thing is insane. So you play creatures, return your lands, replay your lands. What are, I... Quiet, Siri. I don't know if anyone heard my Siri uh, speak up. All right, I, I see that there is some, like, janky potential to this card. So I think I'm going to put it into the B tier. Just because, like, returning lands to your hand can recycle them for a lot of different purposes. But I don't see it as, like, a broken card or anything like that. At least I don't know how. I played in my Lavinia stack stack. Fun times. You could play with Stasis as well to return, like, play creatures, return lands. I don't know. Maybe I'm being ridiculous. But I, I see the potential. I see the potential. Chows with hidden strings. <laughs> Blue one generic sorcery. You may tap or untap target permanent. Then you may uh, tap or untap another target permanent. It's got cipher. Would you be curious? Would you be surprised to know that this is played in like a tier one combo deck in Magic the Gathering? I would be surprised too. This card is terrible. It's like, you may tap or untap target permanent. Then you can tap or untap another target permanent. When, when are you ever going to cipher it onto another creature? But believe it or not, this card is like really well positioned when you pair it up with Lotus Field. Because then you can tap the Lotus Field for a bunch of mana. Untap it, tap it for a bunch of mana. Very strong, uh, very strong interaction. But only good in one deck, the Lotus Field combo deck. So I can't give it like, it's not a very flexible card. Has, I don't think it sees any play outside of that, so I'm just going to put in the B tier. It's it's barely playable. Barely playable. This is at least a storm count for zero. I guess so. Anyway, you heard the music. That means it's time to thank our sponsor, FusionGamingOnline.com. 
my favorite place to buy my Magic the Gathering cards. If you're looking out for the Fallout Commander decks, buy them first at FusionGamingOnline.com. Don't forget, there's always... What else do they have here? Also, the Outlaws of Thunder Junction is around the corner. If you're looking for singles from the hottest new set, you also can get them at FusionGamingOnline.com. Don't forget to use coupon code Nikachu at checkout to get 5% off all your purchases, and it supports the channel. We're also going to thank Mana Traders, the premier place for renting magic cards for the online client, Magic Online. Play all the decks, all formats you want between Commander, Pioneer, Standard, Modern, Legacy, Vintage. You ever want to play with Black Lotus? This is your chance. I've done it myself. It's quite, quite cool. Playing Magic Online, renting with Mana Traders. You can support the channel using my Mana Traders link in the description below or save 10% off your first two months using coupon code Nikachu underscore Z-U-E. -Z okay, back to our wicked tier list. Uh, okay, we got Big Bone Records. Profts. What is this? I... Dedic memory Profts what is a profts Pro like a profit Profts I did a memory uh, is a blue one generic legendary enchantment when profts I did memory enters the battlefield you draw a card you have no maximum hand size well I'm gonna need to draw a few more cards before that's gonna become relevant at the beginning of combat on your turn if you've drawn more than one card this turn uh, put X plus one plus one counters on target creature you control, where X is the number of cards you've drawn this turn, minus one. I don't have to look into this card very deep. It, like, does, it does some, it does stuff. It has synergy. It's a, a little clunky, though. Because if I'm drawing a lot of cards, I don't know if I want to be putting counters on my creatures. Uh, but it's, it, it can be relevant if you build around it, I guess. I have high hopes for this card, which have yet to be crushed. Yep, keep working on it. Proft is a legendary creature from the set? Ah. Well, this is his memory. And if I remember correctly, which I, di which I didn't, uh, he has no maximum hand size. Okay, next up, we go with uh, Nathan's Boing. Is that really it? Boing? Is there a card called Boing? There literally is a card called... There's a card called Boing! Okay, uh, two mana instant. Return target creature to its owner's hand. Then roll a... S you have we're rolling dice now? Roll a six-sided die. If the result is three or less, scry a number of cards equal to the result. Ah, they don't want us scrying for like five, six, or seven. It's not terrible. It's not very good either. Is this elephant in their underwear? Where it's like superhero. They're in like superhero wear. There's no cape though. Where's the cape? All superheroes wear un their underwear on the outside. They love it. Showing off their undies. We got a million. I think I, I don't know if I have to do exclusively super chats today. You people are crazy with these super chats today. We got Boomerang. A good old bounce card. It's still not too bad. Boomerang. Blue, blue. Instant. Return target. <laughs> Another bo boing card. Return target permit to its owner's hand. That's it. Now the, old, now, the benefit to this card over every other bounce spell is you can return lands to somebody's hand. This is gonna hurt. Are you going to get salty over that? You're going to get salty over bouncing your land back to your hand? And, if, and in Commander, if that happens to you, you know that they were, like, really out for you. They really, they were really, <laughs> they're really gunning for you. That being said, this is not that exciting these days. Bouncing lands, I don't... This card used to be very good, but now it's actually just really sad. It's like two mana for the option of bouncing someone's land, which is not particularly good. Sometimes that's good, but overall, like, you don't care. You, you would rather do something like this, where uh, you go boing, where you return target, like a creature or a non-land permit, you get some extra value out of your bounce card. Boomerang is just like a little bit vanilla. But uh, is the ultimate bounce card. That's all. Infinity has a circus theme, so Boing is the per is the performer close. Ah, oh, they're performing. Dingle Dingle Bag with the bewitching, bewitching leech, leechcraft. Okay, we got bewitching leechcraft. Two mana aura. 
uh, enters the battlefield, tap enchanted creature. You, it's an uh, enchant creature. Enchanted creature as if this creature would untap during your untap step, remove a plus one plus one counter from it instead. If you do, untap it. Huh? Enchant creature, tap the enchanted creature. Ah, so if it has counters on it, you can pay for it. Otherwise, uh, the creature is going to be tapped for forever. And it's like, it's like, honestly, it's like a bad pacifism. If, if you can pay encounters, then you can get around this thing. I think this is a D tier card. Unless you want to put this on your own card, on your own creatures for some reason, which makes absolutely no sense at all. Special Maniac asks, have we done Charter Course? It was my card. I started the show off with that card. Uh, was that a super chat? No, it was not a super chat. We got Dylan with the Psychotic Rift. Thank you very much for the super chat. Psychotic Rift? Is it, Are you saying Psychotic Rift or Cyclonic Rift? Psychotic something. Psychotic something? Something Rift? This has to be Cyclonic Rift, right? I think it has to, it has to be Cyclonic Rift. Like, there's no way it's anything else. I don't know any other Rifts in this game. Are there any other Rifts? Shadow Rift, Set Adrift. Yeah, it's Cyclonic, it's Cyclonic Rift. <laughs> it's, well, let's look at the original, the OG picture that people are most familiar with. I like the new pictures of Cyclonic Rift, uh, to be honest. All right, Cyclonic Rift. Two mana instant, return target non-land permanent you don't control to its owner's hand, or you can overload it. And if you overload it, you return all non-land permanents you don't control to their owner's hands. This card's very, 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 very annoying. Uh, the more, ca however, the more casual the game gets, the stronger this card gets, because if you're playing super competitively, th there's like no opportunity to ever use this card. Uh, you'll never get to seven mana, or your opponent won't even have that many things in play to bounce anyway. So there's no other blue card with Rift in its name for two mana. All right, well, it's confirmed. So the more casual the game gets, the more powerful Cyclonic Rift gets. And you can see as the price, they pre-printed this thing a million times. They still can't get it under 30 bucks. Commander's pretty casual. So this would be like the S tier of like casual commander, but I got to judge this card based on all formats, but I'm still going to give it an A tier because even in casual commander, because it's so busted, it is worthy of being this high up. It's just that good. I mean, you basically reset the game for them and you have all, all your stuff is completely untouched. All right, next up, let's take a look at Mario's Remand. Remand might make a comeback. Okay, blue one generic instant, counter target spell, and if the spell is countered this way, you put it back into the owner's hand instead of the graveyard, and you get to draw a card. So basically, you stop their card, and you get to draw a card off of it. Particularly better on one-on-one -on -one magic. Uh, one -on -one magic. Uh, it's also really good if you can bounce certain zero mana spells, like for example, if someone cascades into a card, you bounce that, you remand that card back to their hand. Uh, and then, like, it's useless. Or you bounce just any suspend card and force people to resuspend it. So there's a, there's a lot of targets for Remand that after it has been um, cast, it's sort of useless in their hand. Uh, that being said, a lot of good counter spells these days. Hard to be reaching for Remand. I'm going to put it into the B tier. It's still not a bad card. Alan with... Hold on, is it time for a super... Okay, well... I feel bad to skip this after I give it to you. Fumble! Fumble is... Blue one generic instant. Return target creature to its owner's hand. Gain control of all auras and equipment that were attached to that creature and attach them to another creature. So, you ba basically... If there's a creature suited up with auras and equipment, you can boing that card back to their hand and then just swipe all their stuff. Little win more, in my opinion, by a huge mile. But it is a huge game changer if you can pull it off. So I will put it in the B tier. It's really win. It's a, like I think it's like a win more situational card. But like when you pull it off, it's like, well, like you're basically the boss now. You took their cards. Oh my god! I got 24 super chats. Okay, I think I gotta get. I gotta drill through some super chats here. 
Next up with Kagan. Uh, let's try Goggles of the Night. Goggles? I own the Altered Art. Goggles... Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, it's Goggles of Night. Goggles of Night! Blue and generic uh, artifact equipment. Whenever equipped, creature deals combat damage to a player. Scry one, then draw a card. Okay, not terrible, but also it's like equipped two. No, shouldn't you just draw a card? Oh no, drawing a card is... It's still drawing a card at the very least. Equip creature deals damage. You scry one, draw a card. You equip for two. This is not that exciting, to be honest. We're going to take a... Get a image of one goggle. It's not terrible. I don't know why you would want to run this over a lot of other equipment. It's like... Honestly, it's like sort of a worse sort of fire and ice, right? Sort of fire and ice. Basically is... Sort of Fire Knights costs three more, three mana, but you get so much more value for that extra one mana, and it's colorless in addition to everything else. So, uh, Goggles of the Night is just, it's like, okay, but not, not amazing. Cunning Linguist with Piracy. Two mana, Sorcery. This turn, you may tap land you don't control to help pay for your spells. Isn't this just stone-cold garbage? So basically, Sorcery, until end of turn... It's like, until end of turn, your opponents are going to tap all their lands. So that they can't... So they're going to tap, be tapped out. So I guess you go Piracy. Is that the only purpose? Piracy. Everyone taps out. And then... Second main phase, I don't know, combo off or something? Mana Bridge, yeah, this used to, I mean, there used to be a cost to tapping your lands back then, because you could get mana burn, but there is no more mana burn. So I think this is just jank. C tier. Ah, uh, who am I kidding? This is probably a D tier card. <laughs> who am I kidding? Maybe it's, uh... Uh, maybe it's like, I don't know. I can't tell if you can play, play this in a combo deck or not. Okay, Pacers fan forever. Oh no, you got snipe Pacers fan forever. We did remand already. Alright, so uh, we'll give this next super chat to... Oh, so can I do stasis instead? Absolutely, yeah. Stasis. You came in at just the right time, Pacers fan forever. Stasis! Blue and generic enchantment. Players skip their untap steps at the beginning of your upkeep. Sacrifice stasis unless you pay a blue. So this card is very hard to play, uh, to build around. But when you do, it is an absolute banger. Your opponents can't untap their cards. And there are combos with uh, stasis that allows you to uh, repeatedly untap uh your land untap enough lands to keep or bouncing a land back to your hand so you always have that blue so your opponents never untap their stuff for as long as stasis is around on the battlefield that's right black lance geo stasis at danger so long as stasis is on the battlefield your pawns are basically locked out of the game like they have it's like stone rain for everything it's like removal to every creature the moment you play or tap something it's like gg it's over so anyway, for stasis, I actually think that this thing is a banger card. I it's hard to build around, but I do still think it's like an S tier S tier worthy spell. Cuz it's just so oppressive when you got it online. So I'm going to give stasis S tier. Any Amy Weaver smokes her lunch, Faye Jones had her lunch with her. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, very similar in art styles. They're in that sort of territory. Yeah, S for stasis. Okay, next super chat. We got uh, Zazo Joe with Brain Freeze. Brain Freeze, a blue one generic instant. Target player puts the top three cards of their library into their graveyard with Storm. So it's a it's an alternate way of winning with Storm, effectively. You get Storm count to like a million, or basically get it perpetual, and then you can brain freeze someone to death. Uh, it is a little bit better than, say, Grape Shot in some cases, because if someone has infinite life, or they can gain infinite life, uh, then Grape Shot can't win, but you can't 
you know, you could have infinite life, but you still are going to lose if you have no library uh, in play because you have to draw a card for the turn. And then you're just going to lose, and then it's, it's GG. Anyway, Brain Freeze. Excellent combo win co condition. Um, you could still play around it with, like, an Eldrazi in your deck that'll make you shuffle your stuff back into your deck. But definitely a top tier win condition, so we put an A tier. Uh, next super chat. Ether Burst was great for removing angel tokens. All right, we'll take a look at it. This sounds like a classic. It is a classic. Okay, it is a blue one generic instant. Return up to X target creatures to their owner's hands, where X is one plus the number of Ether Burst cards in all graveyards as you play Ether Burst. Ah, the accumulated knowledge of bounce spells. Yeah, by today's standards, this is awful. Especially since in Commander, like, I, uh, yeah, in Commander, you only allowed one card per turn. C tier. I am so sorry to any pre modern players if these are like pre modern playables, because then I could like put in a B tier. I'm not super familiar with the pre modern metagame. Some pre modern players are like, eat their burst in the grave, accumulate knowledge at C tier. Eat this Nikachu guy's an idiot. David Grove says, me and K ba Bacon Catbug both suggest reset at exactly the same time. All right, we'll take a look at reset. Because I don't even know what it is. Never heard of it. Okay, blue, blue, instant. Cast reset only during an opponent's turn after their upkeep step. Untap all lands you control. Oh, so is the idea is you like you put this on um, Isochron Scepter. And then you get, like, basically, inf you get infinite, un well, not infinite untapped, but you have, like, another means of untapping all your lands. It's like a, s there's, there's some card out there, isn't it? Like, um, there's, like, an untap all your lands card. This is, like, another version of that card. Cast reset only during an opponent's upturn after their upkeep steps. So, like, after their upkeep, untap all my lands, get all my lands again. Jank! <laughs> I think this is a bit jank. Like I, it's it's ah, it's like an I is like in an Isochron specific combo deck, you could make that work, but it has no purpose outside of that. Okay, I'm barely gonna give it B tier, barely, barely. It was mostly a combo and instant only storm combo decks that would brain freeze your opponents out. Okay, okay, I got it. Cutting Linguist with uh, Redirect. You want to target me? No, I target you. It's a blue-blue instant. You may choose new targets for target spell. Targets, which means if it targets multiple things, you can also target... Uh, if it targets multiple targets, you'd redirect all of those things. Uh, it's actually quite simple, but since you've recently begun to walk upright, it may take some time to explain. Uh, it's a decent card, actually. It's it's okay. It's not the greatest thing in the world, but it's like a fun card to like re-blast your opponent, or if your their your opponent targets themselves to like I don't know, draw a million cards, and it's like no, I'm going to draw the million cards instead. I think this is a B tier quality card. Next super chat, petty theft. Does this count? I guess I'll count it. From uh, Akaya. Is it going to show up if I go Petty Theft? It technically does. All right. Blue one generic. Instant adventure. Return target non-land permanent and opponent controls to its owner's hand. It's like a double-sided card. But it does. But it comes with an entire creature for a blue, blue, one generic. Even after you've played the petty theft, it gets exiled. It goes on an adventure, and you get a uh, three-one flash flying creature that can only block creatures with flying. How do I do this? I'm gonna take a picture of like petty theft. It's so the thing is, this part of the card is not that exciting, but the second part of the card is very exciting. Yeah, it's, it's an instant with... Yeah, it's like basically instant with a Aftermath Summon a 3-1 Flyer. I guess we can just take the whole picture of Brazen Bar. Why not? Uh, the fact that it comes with the 3-1 Flyer makes it actually extra good. So, we'll give it A tier. Uh, Brazen Bar sees a lot of play in all formats. 
maybe I should say a lot, but it sees play in all formats. Okay, cunning linguist with another one. Uh, thing in the ice. Ooh, uh, thing in, no, thing in the ice, that is definitely disqualified. So I'm gonna give your super chat to uh, somebody else. Spell plus creature it is not, it is just a creature spell. It's not like, it's not like an enchantment or anything like that. So we're gonna give this super chat to someone who foresees Karn's touch. Uh, whoops. In one second. Karn's Touch, blue, blue, instant. Target non-creature artifact becomes an artifact creature with power and toughness, each equal to its converted mat cost until end of turn. Till end of turn? Is that any good? I don't think so. If it was permanent, now we're talking. Uh, anyway, so it's not permanent. D tier. Hope I'm not being too rash with that ability, with that thing. Okay, next up. Is it like the same people super chatting over and over again? Pacers fan forever with the mana leak. Sorry, the we have so many super chats. I have to get through them all. Freebie section is in trouble today. Look at the original mana leak. Mana leak, blue one generic. Uh, counter target spell unless its caster pays an additional three. Um, if there are no better counter spells, this is usually like the best counter spell in the format. Uh, otherwise, it is like. I mean, it's like. It's counter target spell unless they pay three. If they pay three, they can pay the three. They can cash it in. Or not cash it in. They're, they're gonna get you. I don't know how to explain it. It's like. It's an okay counter spell. It's just in the middle of the ground. It's really good if there's nothing else available, but if it's better than everything else, it's just like B tier. Uh, King Ginger asks, have we done Ether Gust? Who else also suggested Ether Gust? I think I've seen Ether Gust a million times. We haven't done it. I want to give credit to somebody else. Here we go, Free Friendly Neighborhood. Idiot, asked for Ether Gust. Who other else asked for Ether Gust? Oh, I guess it was just your Friendly Neighborhood Idiot. Okay, Ether Gust. Blue, one generic instant, choose target spell or permanent that's red or green. Uh, its owner puts it on the top or bottom of their library. Great card. So really, really good. First off, it's card advantage because when you put it back into their deck, I mean, we shouldn't say it's card advantage. Like, it's what it's deprives your opponent of a card. Normally, bounce spells put the card back into their hand. When you put it back into their deck, I mean, it's basically gone. Even if they want to put it on top of their deck, Okay, sure, you don't get your draw step anymore. Then it's like, put target creature back into their owner's hand. Opponent doesn't draw a card for the turn. Now, you can either interact with spells on the stack, like board wipes or creatures with ETBs, or you can bounce things that are already in play. So I like the flexibility of this. Ether Gust is a really, really good spell. The only downside is that it can only hit red or green cards. But uh, even then, I think it is a very top tier quality card. A I put in the A tier. It's like, when it's good, it's very, very good. I uh, got to... Let me organize some stuff here on the back end. Okay, next up. We did Brain Freeze, Comstar Agent. Sorry about that, you got sniped. I don't even know if you got sniped, to be honest. Okay, so we're gonna give that super chat to... Toilet Ducks Maddening Cacophony. That's a mill card, isn't it? Blue one generic sorcery with a kicker of four. Each opponent mills eight cards. If this spell is kicked instead, each opponent r mills a half their deck rounded up. Wow! Forget eight. We're going for 50. So this is like the best way of guess, I guess, for milling cards. It's not terrible. It's like very good for a mill deck. Um, I'll put in the B tier. One of Mill's finest two mana things. Can I do snapback instead? Sure, why not? Snapback! It's a bounce spell that can be played for free. It's two mana instant. You may exile a blue card from your hand rather than pay this spell's mana cost. Return to our creature to its owner's hand. It's like, it's like one of the better bounce spells because you can like be tapped out and still play it at the same time. 
that at least I think ma makes up for the fact that it only bounces what non land per is it non land per creatures turn no just creatures uh, but hey it's free free is free at the cost of exiling a blue card I'll put in the B tier okay Kagan no creatures hold my soul cipher board Well, at least it's a blue artifact. Okay, enters battlefield with three omen counters on it. Pay two, tap. Blue the top two cards of your library. Put one of them into your graveyard. That's it? We don't even draw a card? Whenever a creature card is put into your graveyard from anywhere, remove an omen counter from Soul Cipher board. Then if there are no more omen counters, we get to transform it into the Cipher Bound Spirit, a 3-2 flyer that can only block creatures with flying. Pay three, four mana, draw two cards, then discard a card. This is literally like a draft card. This is like a draft value card, D tier. Okay, Algot with do over. Thank you very much for your super chat. Is this called, is it actually called do over? Huh? There is no such thing as do over. Let's do this again. Do over. Huh? Such card does not exist! Okay, I gotta have to donate this one, unless we get some clarity on this. Uh, who didn't get a card yet? There's so many cards. Okay, for Ginka, sounds like they didn't get a card. My, to my today D tier suggestion is Auragraft. You got it! Gain control of target aura that's attached to a permit. Attached to it to a permanent, it can enchant. Why you'd want to steal it, I don't know. I think you, I agree with you. This is a D tier worthy card. Super situational and almost completely unnecessary. I didn't see Chow's get a card yet today. Impede Momentum. Impede Momentum is a two mana sorcery. Tap target creature and put three stun counters on it and you get to scry one. This is like a bad removal spell. You don't even get a whole lot of value out of this thing. C tier. The creature's coming back anyway. It doesn't even get detained. Abilities still can be uh, activated. Okay, next up we've got Tetra Tim Bowman with Callous Dismissal. Bounce a thing and have a zombie. This is a blue one generic sorcery. Return target non-land permit to its owner's hand and a mass one. Put a plus one plus one counter on an army you control. If you don't control one, create a zero zero black zombie army creature token first. It's okay. Yeah, you get like you get a small you get a one one with your with your thing. Get a one one with bouncing your spell. C tier. Yeah, keep grinding that value. Ecos! Artificer's Intuition. Alright, blue, one generic enchantment. Oh, this card! Discard an artifact card from your hand. Search your library for an artifact card with converted mana cost one or less. Reveal that card and put it into your hand. Then shuffle your library. This is that card that, like, has potential? But, like, hasn't done anything yet. Because you can discard an artifact card from your hand. So it's like a tutor. But it has to, you have to only find things that are one or less. Reveal it and then put it into your hand. It has potential, people. Maybe one day. But I don't think anyone's discovered that day yet. So I'm going to put it into the C tier. I'd li really like to give it to B tier. But I don't, I don't think it has proven itself uh, to any degree. So we still have to wait. What was it called? Do over? Dash? Does that matter? Oh, it does matter. All right. Uh, is this? It's is not legal in any format, though. Okay, we'll look at it anyway. It was super chatted. Instant. Uh, restart the turn, except with card name and exile. Uh, first return all cards to where they were at the turn. As the turn began, for more inf for, for information from hidden zones like the hand, reconstruct as best as you can and do the restoration. Do reconstruct as best you can and do the rest at random. Oh God, this is complete crazy nonsense. No, 
No, and it's illegal. Uh, what do we got here? Let's take from not the Zilla Merchant Scroll. We did time walk already, Michael. Okay, Merchant Skull, two mana sorcery. Search your library for a blue instant card. Reveal that card, put it in your hand, then shuffle your library. I don't know about the rest of you. Merchant Skull, pretty good. It's a tutor. I really don't have anything much to say about it. You can go get a, a blue instant card, reveal it, and put it in your hand. You could go get Cyclonic Rift. That's the power of uh, Merchant Skull. You can do whatever you want with this thing. I right, tutors are amazing. It creates consistency to your deck. That it didn't have before, I easily believe that this is an S tier worthy card. Not for every deck, but for a lot of combo decks, this is the card. Uh, okay, what? who else do we have here? Anyone else not get a card? Skirtier, did you get a card? Lazatep Plating? It's another one of these Amass cards. Blue one generic instant, a mass one. You and permits you control gain hexproof intelligence turn. Okay. That's not bad. That's actually not bad. You can it, it protect. It it protect, it attacked, and most importantly, you uh a mask got your back. I can put that in the B tier. Nah, I'm gonna put it in the C tier. It's somewhere between C and B though. Definitely somewhere between the two. Uh, we just did Artificer's Intuition. Alpha Nerd! Thank you very much. Uh, we've got a Mana Sync. I thought that's like an X spell. Is it ma Mana Sync or Power Sync? Or are you, are you talking about Mana Drain? Mana Sync. I'm, I'm actually surprised Wizards hasn't made a card called Mana Sync. So we did Mana Drain, and uh, Power Sync is not is an X spell, not a two mana spell. So I'm gonna have to donate this super chat. Um, Power Sync. Well, Power Sync is an X spell, so that's disqualified too. You get you're damned if you do, if you're damned if you don't. So we'll give it to Sam Hansen. I'm like, did we do Paradigm Shift? We did not. Paradigm Shift. This card is a bit jank. All right, we got a blue one generic sorcery. Remove all cards in your library from the game. Shuffle your library into, shuffle your graveyard into your library. It has one purpose and one purpose only. Basically, take an empty graveyard, turn your great empty graveyard into an empty library, then play Thassa's Oracle. So it's got it's got that much going for it. But that's it. It has no other purpose in this game except to uh, have a niche combo with Thassa's Oracle. So I put in the C tier. Really janky combo. Sometimes your deck, sometimes your graveyard is full. Oh my god, we have 19 super chats. This is insane. Alpha nerd. Okay, so now it's just complete super chat central. Uh, unless they get sniped, then we give it to the freebie section. Divide by zero. Divide by zero is a three mana card, so it's instantly disqualified. Thank you very much. See, that's why you keep suggesting things you never know when people screw up um rip laboratory maniac that eh, could work with laboratory maniac but it's just extra extra steps right uh okay what do we got uh michael with predict this is a two mana instant choose a card name then target player puts the top card of their library into their graveyard if the card has the chosen name you draw two cards Otherwise, you just draw one card. So at the very least, you're always going to cycle this card. Uh, and if anything, you can draw two cards off of it. Combine it with Sensei's Divining Top or Surveil cards or Scrying. And you'll know exactly what's on top of your deck. And you'll draw two cards every single time. Ooh, I predict correctly. Uh, it is like... I don't know how much play this sees in Commander. So I'm just going to say it's just worthless trash. It's actually... It's actually like a B tier worthy card in one on one magic, but I think uh, with, with Commander in mind, I'm going to weigh it down to the C tier. Okay, next super chat we got from Kagan. What if you can't come to a river? I don't know what's going to happen. This is a DD card. You come to a river. 
Two mana instant. You can fight the current. Return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand, or you can find a crossing. Target creature gets plus one plus zero until end of turn and can't be blocked this turn. I hate it. It's like, it's sort of a flexible bounce spell, though. So you can get some uh, easy damage in. I wish it was, like, non-land permanent. If it... It's just... Oh, no, it is. Return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. Huh. It's not... I thought it was a good... I, by default, I thought it was going to be a creature because, like, creatures fight currents. You know what I mean? If you get it, the creatures fight currents. So we can actually... But everything, I guess, fights the current if it gets thrown into the river. Ah, I'm gonna leave it at C. -t I'm gonna leave it at C tier. Someone proved me wrong. I think it is an interesting card. I didn't even know this card existed. Okay, next up, we'll take a look at Ecoses. We need some Kamigawa garbage in here. The Hisoka Defiance. What is the Hisoka Defiance, you might ask? Blue one generic instant, carry target spirit or arcane spell. Oh yeah, that is narrow as absolute hell. Very suspicious if you have this in your deck. Very, very sus. Yeah, this is terrible. This is outright garbage. D. D for darn garbage. Ecos, Jace's Erasure. Uh, which is my favorite lantern control card in EDH. Lantern controls in EDH? That's weird. This is a blue one generic enchantment. Whenever you draw a card, you may have target player put the top card of their library into their graveyard. Oh! So it's like, uh, this is like the codex shredder of uh, that type of deck. Hmm. So whenever you draw a card, you may opt to just keep it on top or dump it into the graveyard. Because you can only codex shredder one person at a time, but if you draw tons of cards, uh, or consistently are drawing cards, you can consistently manipulate the top of your opponent's libraries. C tier! This is a hell of a narrow card. You got some cinnamon in your coffee, Banovsky? I got, I got, I got some... I actually have no coffee over here. This is lemon and tea. Love my lemon. Love my tea as well. King Ginger didn't get a spell yet. Okay, spell stutter. Is that a card? Oh, it is. There's the spell stutter sprite, but then there's just the spell stutter. Probably where the sprites came from. Two mana instant, carry target spell, unless it's controlled, pays two. Plus an additional one for each fairy you control. It's not bad. It's not great either. So it's basically, it can sort of become a mana leak in the right situation. C tier. Man, we're just feeling... Are there no more good two mana cards? Do we literally get through them all? Days, Time Walk, Mana Drain, Stasis, Merchant Scroll. Then we have like Counter Spell over here. Muddle the Mixture. I would figure there's like more like bomb two mana cards. There's no way we got through them all. Okay, Ecos. Bolus is Citadel plus Mana Severance. All gas. It's mana severance. Oh, this card. The two mana sorcery. Search, search your library for any number of land cards and remove them from the game. Shuffle your library afterwards. I don't know about that one. I don't know about this one. Like, yeah, you've got your uh, your niche combos, but usually searching your library for your land cards and removing... Okay, for anyone who's afraid of mana screw, just go turn to mana severance and you'll... Problem solved. Problem absolutely solved. I'm putting this still in the C tier. I think that's just way too jank for me. Way too much jank. Okay, let's take one from the uh, freebie section. The Time Beetle from Summer Mermaid Star. The Time Beetle. A two mana... Oh, it's a creature. It's disqualified. Sorry about that. No creatures today, only... I know creatures are technically spells on the stack, but generally speaking, we consider spells anything that is not anything except creatures. Even though that's not how the official rules work. Uh, okay, uh, Blick Mamba wants in Soul Artifact. Oh, this card! 
the blue one generic aura uh enchanted artifact enchanted artifact is a creature with base power and toughness 5-5 five, five in addition to its other types literally sees play in like pioneer has saw some play i believe in standard at the time like the cool thing is you enchant like an indestructible land and then you have an indestructible 5-5 five, five creature so I actually see some competitive play okay i think this is definitely worth more than c tier put in the b tier where it belongs next super chat we've got from uh, pacers fan forever hercules recall bye bye artifacts one of the best artifact hate cards in the game uh blue one generic instant return all artifacts target player controls only one only one player but target player can uh owns to their owner's hand Hold on, wait a minute. I never read that. It's return all artifact target player owns. From. So if I take their artifact, they get their artifact back. I never read that part of it. I thought it was just like return all artifacts target player controls to their owner's hands. Uh, but actually it's like return everything they own back to their hand. So if other people stole their artifacts, stole their soul ring or moxin or something like that. All right, you get it all back. Now this is like a pretty good one-sided board wipe versus the artifact the artifact deck, so this is definitely A tier worthy. Very, very strong artifact artifact hate card in blue. Next up we got Almond's Contingency Plan uh, the Contingency Plan. Contingency plan, a blue one generic sorcery. Look at the top five cards of your library. Put any number of them into your graveyard and the rest back on top of your library in any order. This is just like a weird cantrip. So we look at the top five. We don't even draw a card out of this. Where's our card draw? It's like a worse impulse. Top five cards. Oh, but oh, the idea is you can put them in your graveyard. So put any, oh, okay. So that actually has some benefit over there. It could it could danger actually. It's possible it could it could really danger. Okay, okay. It's probably B tier worthy. It's like a huge graveyard filler. But you still don't draw a card out of this. Okay, I'm still gonna put. Okay, I'm gonna put in the C tier. Just be careful. I don't think it's the worst card to be honest. I'm gonna squish it in there. Contingency plan. You can return all your own artifacts and recast them for storm purposes. Ooh, that's big brained. Talking about Hercules Recall there. Donate my Nikachu, mostly creature spells I super chat. Oh no, Alpha Nerd. Oh, I feel so bad. I should put in the title, No Creatures. Just for you guys, for the people here. Sorry, you like dumped a bunch of super chats. Okay, next up. Look, take a. I think we did Lazateps. Oh, hold on. Did we do Lazatep plating? Thank you very much, Black Lance Geo, for your super chat. Stop Rivers Rebuke? Why would you even... Okay, we did this one already. Rivers Rebuke. Return all non-land permits. Target player controls to learn his hand. Oh, yeah, it will stop Rivers Rebuke. Anyway, uh, that one was... We already did uh, Lazatap Plating, so we're going to super... We're going to donate that super chat to... Okay, who does? Who didn't get a card yet? Uh, oh yeah, there's a lot of lag in this show. Tons of lag. Beware of the lag around here. Turiot, Echoing Truth. A classic. A very good one versus to uh, uh, the token decks. Blue one generic instant. Return all. Sorry, return target non-land permit and all other permits with the same name as that permit to their owner's hands. So it's it can bounce several things at once, particularly tokens. So for that reason, I will put in the B tier. But it's still like a two mana bounce spell, so it's like a little clunky. Next super chat from Alpha Nerd Cloud of Fairies, as we all recognize, uh, that's a creature. <laughs> so we'll donate that one. Uh, where else do we have here? Bryce with the mana maze. Two 
two mana enchantment. Players can't play spells that share a color with the spell last played this turn. What? This has gotta be jank. We're gonna fill. We're filling up the C tier. Or we're filling up the C tier, big time around here. This is like some weird prison card that's really easy to play around, in my opinion. In my opinion. Um. Okay, we'll get this donation at the end of the show, just in case people uh, super chat against each other. Okay, next up we'll go with Daniel. You missed Boomerang on Scepter and Chrome Mox turn one. Oh, Boomerang on Scepter? Is that still that, is that really honestly that broken though? Like. Okay, you have Boomerang on an Isochron Scepter, then what? I think that is like the most lukewarm Isochron Scepter that's possible. It's not like it's counter spell, you know? People still get their ETBs. People can still interact with this thing. Or at least pretty well. Okay, we'll donate this one to... Who doesn't have... Ecos, Power Artifact. It's pretty OP. Oh, the Power Artifact. Blue, blue, aura. Enchant Artifact. Enchant Artifact's activi activated abilities cost two less to activate this effect can't reduce the amount of mana an ability costs to activate to less than one mana so anything that costs one mana so if it costs like two mana then it has to, has to cost at least one mana still it's it's an aura which is awkward um but you can go infinite with some cards like this like uh what's it called on like the the monoliths, for example, Gr Grim Monolith. You put the, this plus Grim Monolith, you have infinite mana because you can tap. Uh, to, like it has this, un like, let's get Grim Monolith on here. Like, this is a combo, right? Yeah, Basalt Monolith, any of the monoliths, really. So this taps at three mana, and you have to pay for it to untap your Grim Monolith, but it costs two less to cast. Sorry, two less to untap if you have the part power artifact. So you tap to add three, spend two of it to untap it, and then you have infinite mana. The power. That is a weird looking axe in my opinion. Very strong combo card. Very strong. And there's a lot of artifacts that you can uh, attach this to. Just like Basalt Monolith for example. A tier card. Baking Cat Bug with the deep water. Premier blue mana fixing. You're joking, right? Okay, blue, blue. Enchantment. Blue. All mana producing lands you control provide blue instead of their normal mana until end of turn. This card looks worthless. All right, big hammerhead shark. It goes deep into the D tier. Deep. Ah, I'll just put it big here like this. Looks cute. It looks, the, the, the shark looks good. Okay, Rest in Serpentine with uh, Hermetic Study. Yeah, this is the original one, right? Two mana enchantment, enchanted creature gains tap. This creature deals one damage target creature or player. This is terrible. D tier. Yeah, I like how it's looking at the shark. Look at, look at the shark like it's crazy or something. Okay, Almond would love to make this work somehow. The Drain Power. Blue, blue, sorcery. Target player activates a mana ability of each land they control. Then empties their mana pool. Uh, add mana to your mana pool equal to the type and amount of emptied from that player, player's mana pool this way. It's unique. Does this work in any way possible? Okay, hold on. Target player activates a mana ability of each land they control. But what if they activate in response? Like it does nothing? Add mana to your mana pool equal to the type and amount of mana from that player's mana pool this way. Yeah, it looks like they could just activate in response and like this card would do nothing. 
Is it even blue ramp? Okay, hold on. Target player activates a mana ability of each land they control. Then that player loses all unspent mana. Oh, you do actually take it. So even if you activate in response, you still get something. Cool. Okay. This does not look useless. Maybe this is actually better than I think it is. I'm going to put in B tier. This could be an A tier worthy card. Like, there's not a lot of blue ramp. But it does depend on your opponent to have, like, a bunch of lands in play. Like, a bunch of lands in play. The unspent mana. Kagan with the Ray of Frost. Two mana aura, flash, enchant creature, enters the battlefield. Uh, yep, enchant creature is red. You tap it. Uh, as long as enchant creature is red, it loses all abilities. Wow, we hating on red around here. And enchant creature doesn't untap during its controller's untap step. So it's like... But it doesn't tap the creature, which means they can at least get, like, one good hoof out of you. The Ray of Frost. C tier. I'm going to have to wrap around with the C tier. Eventually, the C tier is just going to, like, go down and then to the left, and it's going to meet with the D tier. Eventually. Metal Lake, a top 10 counter spell, or was before. You are correct. However, however, we have already done this card. Sorry about that. So we're going to donate your super chat to... Julio, the Veil of Secrecy. Now, this is a 2-mana Arcane Instant. Target creature is unblockable and can't be the target spells or ability this turn. So it gets Shroud. Uh, splice onto Arcane. Return a blue creature you control to its owner's hand. Ugh. Ugh. Is this Shredder? It sort of looks like Shredder to me. Shredder with swords. You know I'm going to put this in the D tier. That's how much I don't like it. Uh, okay, next up. Uh, Alpha Nerds, Mercurial Spell Dancer. Oh, did I have the sound effect already? We'll, we'll do this one. Mercurial Spell Dancer. Great card in blue green buff deck. Okay, we have a two mana, two one Frexian Rogue. Oh, and this is a creature. Damn it. I think, oh yeah, I forgot all your super chats were creatures. Damn it. Okay, so we'll donate this one to... I'm gonna get out of here. Eco's Declaration of Not. For when you hate a specific card with a passion. Some cards... Some decks can only play one card, right? So we have a blue, blue enchantment. Uh, as Declaration of Not comes into play, name a card. Pay a blue counter target spell with that name. There was like a deck in the finals of a regional championship that played this card. Because like, you know, it named some like key combo cards in the format that they know they are going to be played by their opponent. Yeah, crazy card. I don't know where to take a picture from here. I don't think it's that bad. I would give it B tier. Not too bad for the B. It, it's very situational, though. Very, very, very situational. Ooh, naming someone's commander works, too, though. That's great. Yeah, that works as well. Hey, I know what you all, all of you are playing. Boom! Name Captain Sisse or something like that. Okay, next super chat. We have King Ginger uh, with Absorb Identity. Dank jank. Today I've learned that blue has a lot of garbage at two mana. I didn't realize. I thought blue would be like the king of like two mana cards. And it just turns out they're all trash mostly. Absorb identity. A two mana instant. Return to our creature to its owner's hand. You may have spell shifters. You control become copies of that creature until it a turn. This is absolute jank. Yeah, make it, make it for your spell shifter deck. D tier. Look, look at how few like there are some heavy bangers here like time walk but outside of that like there's really not that many to be honest um alpha nerd with uh curry emergent intelligence broken in my opinion 
Korea. It is a creature. It's disqualified. Okay, we're, so we're going to donate this to... Mad Cat's Snap. How did we get this far and not have Snap here? Okay, this is a Popper All-Star, people. A Popper All-Star. Also not bad in Commander either. Two mana instant. Return target creature to its owner's hand and untap two lands. Th that's, that's the gravy of all this. It's free. You can't go wrong with free. So you return target creature. You could bounce your own creature. You can bounce your opponent's creature and still have mana up left over. So that actually this card is very, very, very good for the fact that it costs basically no mana. Like literally no mana. And it doesn't cost you any, like doesn't cost you cards from your hand. Uh, so I do believe that this is an A tier worthy card. Okay, next up we have Tetra Tim Bowman with uh, Treasure Hunt. It's its own deck type. Blue red with Simic Assault or blue black with Zombie Infestation. Reliquary Tower for hand size, Mystic Sanctuary to replay. Is that still played on Magic Online? There was once a treasure hunt metagame on MTG Arena. Uh, it's a two mana sorcery. So the idea is like you have like almost no cards in your deck. Uh, you have like maybe one or two cards. You reveal cards on the top of your library until you reveal a non-land card. Put all cards revealed this way into your hand. So you like, I don't know, is it still worth even trying? You might have like three seismic assaults in your deck. And you have just a bunch of blue red lands. And uh, like I guess four copies of treasure hunt so you like mulligan down to a seismic assault or no i guess you can no no you, you don't need that you could have like maybe one or two seismic assaults in your deck you just play treasure hunts and just put a bunch of lands in your hand and until you hit a seismic assault play the seismic assault and like blast your opponent's face for a million or like treasure hunt one more time draw the rest of the lands in your deck and blast your opponent's face for a million um <clears throat> Jank, though. Supreme jank. Super jank. C tier. Those decks were never good. They were fun, though. I, I played them myself. I have a 57 land deck. Three treasure hunt. One journey of the oracle. And maze's end. Reliquary tower needed. Reliquary tower needed indeed. Okay, next up. Oh, here we go. Counterbalance. Oh, my God. We also have counterbalance. We have the double super chat. Pace fan forever and Bacon Cat Bug get credit for uh, this card. Okay, this is a blue blue enchantment. Whenever an opponent plays a spell, you may reveal the top card of your library. If you do, counter that spell. Uh, yeah, if you do counter that spell, it has the same converted mana cost as the revealed card. Now, if you're doing this blind, this card is awful. But if you can manipulate the top of your library in any way with, like, Brainstorm or Sensei's Divining Top or, a, like, a new number of other cards, then the card is amazing. You do have to... Usually it's good at hitting the stuff that's at low mana. Zero mana, one mana, two mana. Getting... Trying to counter things that are, like, four mana, five mana, six mana. A little bit more difficult. Not impossible! But it's possible. I mean, like, hey, Force of Will is five mana. You can put that on top of your library and, and counter things. We did remand. We did remand. Anyway, Counterbalance. Uh, very, very strong card. A little bit of build around necessary, but it's st still a very strong card. A tier. Yeah, we did remand. Where's remand? Remand over there in the B tier over there. Not the best, not the worst. Kagan with some, uh, what's it called? Uh, some vehicles, the Mosel Mobilizer Mac. It is a vehicle. It is technically not a creature. We have a blue one generic 3-4 vehicle with flying. And when it becomes crude, up to one target vehicle you control becomes an artifact creature until end of turn. Ooh. So basically, it's like you crew two things at once. This isn't bad. It does have crew three, which is a bit expensive. But it's like two mana for three, four with flying, and it like turns your other was it turns your other vehicles into a creature. Yeah, it's not terrible. I don't think it's not terrible. Maybe I'm overrating this card. I will put in the B tier. It would 
be good for a vehicles deck. Uh, next up, we've got Kate. Where am I gonna put these cards? Like, we're just gonna start overlapping everything. There's so many super chats left, and there's so many donations to be had. Okay, uh, another add to another add to, and to add to a saga founding of the third path. Founding, sorry, founding the third path. Okay, two mana. You may cast an instant or sorcery spell with uh, mana value one or two from your hand without paying its mana cost. Oh, that can be broken. Okay, uh, two. Chapter two. Target player mills four cards. That is not very exciting. Oh, well, chapter three. Exile target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard. Copy it. You may cast the copy. This is actually a pretty underwhelming card. It's like, it's okay. You may cast an instant or sorcery spell with mana value one or two from your hand. So it's like... But I spent two mana on this thing already. I spent two mana. So basically the point is, you I guess you mill yourself and try to find something from your graveyard to replay. C tier. It's, it's gonna wrap around. We're gonna wrap around into the D tier soon. Emperor with fumble. I believe we did fumble already. Fumble is this is this fumble? Which one's fumble? Oh, this is fumble. Right? Sorry about that, Emperor. Fumble's a great suggestion though. Okay, so we're gonna donate this one too. Uh, we did muddle the mixture already. A tier worthy card. <laughs> By the end of this episode, you'll literally have ranked all the two two blue non-creature CMC well, all the two blue non yeah, maybe. It's very, very possible. Here are Toads with Marrow Commerce. Two mana! Tribal Enchantment, Merfolk. At the end of your turn, untap all Merfolk you control. This card is Stone Cold Garbage. It's not a particularly useful ability. D tier. Next super chat. King Ginger with uh, Ride, Ride and Shine. Is that how? Is that what it's called? If done, if done, then donate. I was like, right? Is it Rise and Shine or? I think you mean Rise and Shine. If it's Ride and Shine, I'll look it up. No, nope, it's right. Okay, there is a Rise and Shine. Two mana sorcery. Tar target non-creature artifact you control becomes a zero zero artifact creature. Put four plus one plus one counters on each artifact that became a creature this way. And you can also overload it. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Target non-creature artifact. Like a soul ring. You control becomes a zero zero. Put four counters on each artifact that became a creature this way. And you can also overload it. Which means each other non-creature. Oh, I see. So for six mana all my uh, basalt monoliths and everything are just going to become enormous creatures. Interesting. We animate all our garbage, which as it is, they, you animate the slinky. They got slinkies in the multiverse over there. It's okay. B tier. I like that you can overload. It basically turns everything into an army. Yeah, face my army of treasure and food token. Exactly. There we go. The food tokens, your treasure tokens, clue tokens. I didn't even think of that. Okay, Emperor, what do you got here? Uh, Time and Tide, my favorite anti-teferi's protection against a wrath card. Time and Tide. It is a blue-blue instant. All creatures that are phased out, phase in, and all creatures with phasing phase out what all creatures that phased out phase in oh <laughs> so okay, this is a godom for anyone playing teferi's protection so you play teferi's protection phase all your cards out and you're like nope i have a response to your teferi's response the time and tide so everything yeah and then uh, all creatures with phasing phase out so anything with fa phasing will phase out and then uh, you're gonna have this 
the huge... This is like the, uh... The surprised Pikachu face. But for the Teferi card. Uh, I still think this is a bit jank. I mean, this is like a counter to literally only one card. So I'm gonna go with uh, D tier here. Okay, Almond going after Nikachu's heart. The Deep Root Pilgrimage! Unbelievable... Okay. Surprised that actually hasn't been named yet. Uh, it is called... Yeah, it's called Deep... Is it called... Oh, I'll just look up Pilgrimage. I don't think... Is it called Deep Root Pilgrimage? Oh yeah, Deep. It's Deep Root, not Deep Rooted. I knew something was off. Alright, two mana enchantment. Whenever one or more non-token merfolk you control become tapped, create a 1-1 one, one blue merfolk creature token with hexproof. And the deal is, if you can tap... If you can infinitely tap a merfolk and untap it, you get infinite blue hexproof tokens. Which, in some capacity, could hit danger. But in practice, it's really hard to pull off. So I gotta give this the C tier. Sorry, Deep Root Pilgrimage. You really disappointed me. Okay, Kagan, last one. You really love the show today, Kagan. Uh, last one with a background. We're looking at the Dungeon Delver. What the hell is this background to do? It's a two mana legendary art, uh, enchantment. Commander creatures you own have room abilities of dungeons you own trigger an additional time. I have no idea how useful this is. I've never seen it in play. I've never seen it do anything. Oh, Christopher V says the, the, what's it called card? The time and tide is not a response. You have to use it after it resolves. Well, I will use it after the, it resolves. It's my response to after it resolves. How good is this card? Dungeon Delver. Commander creatures you own have room abilities of dungeons you own and trigger an additional time. I know, like, dungeons are pretty strong, but this could, like, I guess be, like, extra strong? I have no idea. I, this is, this, this is, like, a complete toss-up for me. Maybe this, the card's very powerful. Maybe it's complete jank. I'll put, I'll put in the C tier. I don't want to say for sure it's garbage. I want to believe. I want to believe that it's good. Don't know how it's good. It's kind of neat. I'll recommend it to my friend who has a blue-black dungeon deck. Exactly. You can also have this as a commander if your commander has a background or whatever. I know, it's like free. So the, the deal is, like, the card is... The card is free to play. Dungeons sometimes are broken, but it's more broken on one-on-one -on -one magic, not commander magic. And this can, this only is very useful to you if you're you're playing commander. If you know what I mean. All right, Steve Cooper is the life of the party. Three donations to everybody. Okay, three donations. Toilet Duck, Mage's Guile. Uh, we have a two mana instant. Target creature can't be the target. Spells or abilities this turn, and it can cycle. This is awful. It's like a weird protection spell that you can dump later. So it's not like the worst card in the world, but I don't love it. Uh, C tier. C tier wrapping around into the D tier. It's gonna be one with the D tier. Skirt tier, re sculpt. Oh, I like this card. Okay, this is not destroy. This is exile. It's a two mana instant exile target artifact or creature. Its controller creates a four four blue and red elemental creature token. Um, but you can also target your own thing if you really need to buff up your creature. Like someone destroys your creature. Nah. In response, I'm gonna resculpt it. So I'm at least gonna have a four four out of the deal. But it exiles. So you know, if anyone's trying to put anything in their graveyard, no, well, it's all right. What would be? I guess we take a picture of this thing. Anyway, I like the card. I think it's very useful. B tier. There's not a lot of blue ex there's not a lot of blue destruction spells. Forget exile cards. Okay, and then next uh next up. Mellow, the modern age. From uh Neo Neon Kami. What was this? Someone else's card? Okay, the modern age. We got two mana, chapter one, draw a card, then discard a card, chapter two, do the same. 
Chapter 3, Exile, return to the battlefield, uh, transformed under your, own, under your control, and is a 2-3 flying spirit. Honestly, that's a little underwhelming at the end of uh, that entire or ordeal. But it's okay. You, drew, you like, looted for two turns, and then you exiled it into, two, into a 2-3 creature. Z tier. Okay, um... Ooh, Spectral Maniac with Ideas Unbound. How do we not get that one? Uh, blue, blue, draw three cards, then discard three cards at... Re Sorry, dis discard three cards at end of turn. This card, if you're trying to combo off, is uh, fantastic. It's just two mana, draw three cards. Uh, you have to discard three cards at end of turn, but if you use, A, use up all your cards or win the game immediately, then you don't even care about that second uh, half of that thing. Not to mention as Arcane. I don't know if you're going to splice onto Arcane this, with this card onto anything else, but it's, it's really pretty. It's very good in the right deck. Ideas Unbound. Where to put it? Ah, I could put it in the B tier. Shifted too far here. We have another super chat to keep the game, to keep the show going. We got Ecos uh, with transmute artifact. Did we do transmute artifacts or no? Got to be a soul nest here. Oh, this yeah. Why? Well, how did we not do this one? Okay, we have blue blue sorcery. Sack an artifact. If you do, search your library for an artifact card. If that card's mana value is less than or equal to the sacrificed art mana. Sacrificed artifacts mana value put it onto the battlefield. If it's greater, you can pay X, where X is the difference. If you do, put it onto the battlefield. If you don't, put it to its owner's graveyard, then shuffle. So essentially, it's Tinker. Now, you do have to pay the extra mana if the card is more expensive than the artifact you sacrifice, but still, Tinker is Tinker and a danger. What's the original look like? Still looks very similar. Transmute artifact, tutoring artifacts directly onto the battlefield. It danger. It is an S tier worthy card. It's a good thing that we got that one at the last second. And with that, that's our that's our tier list. Do you believe in my tier list? Do you disagree? Well, you can always let me know in the comments section below. At least you don't sack as a cost. Oh, that's even more broken too. That's crazy. Well, I hope you like the today's show. I like looking at all the blue cards. Huge fan of the. I'm a huge fan of the blue mages. And uh, if you want to be part of the show, you got to be here at 11 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. Thanks to everyone who supports the channel. If you're a patron on Patreon, a member on YouTube, or you super chat to be part of the show, or super chat to help other people be part of the show. And thanks to the coffee crew who shows up here in the morning. People like, uh, we got Tetra Tim Bowman, Bryce, Henrik. We got Christopher, uh, sorry, Crow Core Games, Christopher B. Ecos, Ferginka, Toads, Mario. Spectral Maniac, Station Disaster Dingle Bag, because you guys are the show. So as usual, my coffee crew, keep brewing up them coffees, and we will keep brewing up the magic. Take care of yourselves, and I will see you at the next cup.